we were going to have a wrestling podcast today with me, Star Soldier, and Michael Burnham, but I think plans changed with Michael Burnham, so uh, that kind of got scrapped. We were just going to talk about, I guess, the current state of wrestling and whatever it was. Um, but just found out, sadly, as some of you know by now, by the time you hear this, that uh, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes passed away today. He was 69. I don't think any details have been released yet. But, uh, yeah, I saw that on Facebook. It was posted by WWE. Then I went to PW Insider to confirm. And, unfortunately, it is true. And, uh, yeah, that that's that's really sad. Been a big, big fan of Dusty Rhodes and really feel for uh, his sons, Cody and, and Dustin, and or, yeah, Dustin Rhodes. And, uh, yeah, this, this really sucks. Yeah, so yeah, I've been really fun. But yeah, hello, this is yeah, Star Soldier 1, or yeah, just Ryan. And it was amazing to see his career throughout the years. You know, he wasn't the most athletic guy, but man, could he go and ring. I remember him having like 60 minute matches with the likes of Ric Flair. You know. Yeah. He made Just such a long and story career, and he's just an amazing wrestler. You know, I like the, his gimmick of being like the common man. You know, he wasn't like a big guy or anything. No, he liked to I don't know, play the gimmick that he was an everyday person, you know. Wasn't afraid yeah. to like, work on the farm or be blue collar and do what we do for a living, you know. Yeah. He wasn't like this big, muscular, I don't know, Hollywood type that always wears sunglasses. Just a rough and tough guy that wore, you know, cowboy hats, toughest nails in the ring, tentacle, you know, and always, you know, like to throw in the occasional funny move like that by Al Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I watched Dusty Rhodes throughout my childhood. And so I remember him in the NWA, WCW. Um, I was too young, though, to, uh, when when he uh, – I wasn't watching wrestling quite yet. I was like five years old when he had the feud with the four horsemen. Mm-hmm. But I did see him wrestle um, – in WCW sometime after that, and then I seen him go to WWF, and he would that, have that famous American Dream music. And we had the polka dots, which was meant to be a rib, and then ended up getting going over. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I remember him and Sapphire. Sapphire had passed away quite some time ago, I think, uh, when they were together, and then they teamed up to go against the Macho King, Randy Savage, and Sensational Sherry. Unfortunately, all four of them were now gone no longer with us mm-hmm. and i remember wrestlemania 6 live i couldn't watch pay-per-views at the time but i remember um i can have my tv set to where i can listen to the pay-per-views live and so i would listen to the matches and i remember listening to the match between uh dusty sapphire and sherry and macho king and uh so that sounded pretty fun then of course i got to watch it you know sometime after that seeing the match itself and yeah, that was good times, and uh, yeah, it was, and then Dusty Rhodes, and when he came back to WCW, and reunited with his son Dustin, and yeah, so, uh, I mean, it, there's so much to talk about with Dusty Rhodes, I mean, I used to have the DVD, you can see the documentary, I think, on the, the WWE Network, um, mm-hmm. of Dusty Rhodes, and I mean, yeah, yeah, I think he started, what, in the 60s or 70s, he goes way back, and uh yeah, he had a lot of charisma. He's one of the greatest talkers in this business. And, yeah, he was definitely uh, one of my top favorites, one of the biggest legends. He got inducted, I think, I believe it was the 2007 Hall of Fame, if I'm not correct. I mean, if if I am correct, uh, it might have been 2007 Hall of Fame, but he, I think he was the head of that class. Do you remember Star Soldier? Yeah. I remember him inducted in, you know, that was a cool event. Yeah. yeah, I believe it was 2007. I'm trying to remember the year. Um, Cody and, and Dustin inducted him. 
And Cody said he's one of the greatest talkers in the history of this business, or the greatest talker. And so, yeah, um, very sad. I guess we'll find out uh, the details later on exactly what happened. I mean, he was, you know, 69 years old, so, I mean, it could have been something, natural, natural causes. But, yeah, uh, it's real sad. Dusty Rhodes, one of the biggest icons in wrestling history. And, uh, yeah, man, real, real sad that he's gone. And uh, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it right now. Just wanted to talk about it real quick. I guess give a quick tribute. I just found this out when I logged on to Facebook. And, yeah, it's just uh, real, real sad to say the least. And, I mean, heck, if we uh, – this show could go on probably for two hours if we really want to talk about the entire career of Dusty Rhodes. But for those of you who do watch wrestling and not too familiar with them, I strongly – suggest you check him out on YouTube or the network, wherever wherever you can get access to old school wrestling footage, check out some of his stuff. Um I remember he also wrestled briefly in ECW. He had a match with Steve Carino. And uh mm -hmm. yeah, so and so Dusty Rhodes is definitely someone it, it here's what not many people know actually. It was a clash of the champions back in August of ninety four. Now, during this time, Hulk Hogan is just now starting in WCW, and I'm kind of just starting to, to get back in wrestling again, and I didn't really, I kind of watched it off and on occasionally, and it was the, uh, there was a segment where Ming, for, formerly known as Haku, came to the ring, and Dusty Rhodes hit him over the head with a chair. At the time, Ming was the bodyguard of Colonel Robert Parker, and this guy, you know, supposedly felt no pain. Dusty Rhodes came in there, hit him over the head with a wooden chair, didn't even phase Ming. And Ming just snapped and put the tongue and death grip on Dusty Rhodes. And then that made me so mad, I almost cried because I wanted Dusty Rhodes to really whoop Ming. And uh, But the cool moment was, you know, made me gain respect for Ming. Like, man, this guy can't be hurt. This guy's awesome. And But it also was a frustrating, sad moment because I wanted Dusty Rhodes to beat him up. And then Ming puts him in that grip and takes him down. I was like, what? But that moment right there is what got me hooked back onto wrestling hardcore again up until like 2008 when I just didn't become a hardcore fan anymore. But that moment right there, Clash of the Champions 94 in, in August, um, that moment right there made me think, man, that, that was an awesome moment. Frustrating, but awesome moment. I don't want to miss wrestling, uh, and, and, you know, again, because, you know, you never know when something awesome is going to happen. And. During that time, wrestling is really starting to get popular again with Hulk Hogan coming to WCW and all that stuff. And But that very moment right there, I'll never forget because uh, it was just such an awesome moment. And I said, man, I don't want to miss anything about wrestling because you might miss out. So I better watch everything. And I, so I would try to watch as much as I can, even the generic shows like WCW Worldwide and pro wrestling on Saturday mornings or whatever. But Dusty Rhodes was uh, an instrumental part of me really getting hooked on to wrestling again. And very charismatic, and I mean, he was just so awesome. He didn't. He's he's proof that you don't have to have the best look, uh, the best body, whatever, to be one of the greatest of all time. Because Dusty Rhodes didn't definitely did not have the best body. wasn't best. Uh, he he was still in shape somewhat, but he still carried extra weight and did have a pretty body. And not everybody has to to get over in this business. And he proved it. And uh, he was. That's why so many people loved him. I think he was, you know, like I said, the common man. Not, you know, rich Hollywood type, the common man. And so many people got behind him on that. And his feud with the Horseman, I mean, is one of the most, one of the best feuds in wrestling history. So, yeah, he will be missed, to yeah, say the he least. Does have, yeah, he definitely does have a very storied career, like three-time NWA world champion. And he was all over the place, too. He's in TNA wrestling, you know. When TNA wrestling was really starting to become big, not so much now. And he was there when NXT was really starting to take off. And <laughs> just Navy wrestling promotion, he was there. And he had such a story career. You know, he was doing that, pretty much doing wrestling up to the day he died. And you got to commend him for that. And yeah, yeah. I think uh, maybe WWE was a bit too hard on him because I think when he cut a promo on Stephanie McMahon, <laughs> uh, 
it was funny because he wanted to let Stephanie get a word in, and it felt real. It felt like there was real tension there, and that's what you miss about wrestling because everything feels like a script, but with Dusty Rhodes, you know, it didn't seem like they were going by a script. No, he was doing his own thing. <laughs> You know, for better or worse sometimes because his commentary can be a little goofy at moments, but, you know, that's a fun part of Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. And he would definitely be missed. Yeah, I remember his commentary when he would commentate in WC- WCW with Tony Schiavone and Bobby the Brain Heenan. He would get into it with Bobby Heenan. Yeah. And, yeah, he, he just his commentary, he, he was just, uh, he was awesome in that. And he was fun funny to listen to. And so... Yeah, um, rest in peace, Dusty Rhodes, and our thoughts and prayers go out to his his family and his friends as well. And uh, so, yeah, um, that is it. We're out of here. I'm Ron Moore for Star Soldier. God bless and take care. Okay, thank you for listening.